So the thing with oxalates, though, too, is that they they bind to minerals because um, yes, and and that's well, that was what was so messed up in these animals is that their teeth. They have pictures in the studies of their teeth, and there's no minerals in them. You kidding? Now, when we started using organic acid testing, they had oxalate on the test. So I was measuring, you know, all kinds of populations. And then what I found is that oxalate is elevated in a lot of people with chronic pain syndromes mm-hmm. and with people with fatigue issues. And people, you know, you're you're really concerned about people with um, more mental health issues. And we had a huge number of people who joined our group, found out their oxalate was low, was high, I'm sorry, and lowered the oxalate. And after about six months or so, a lot of them started talking to each other on the on my group and they were saying, oh my gosh, I've been anxious for years and I've been on this all this anti-anxiety medication. I don't need it anymore. Wow. That's that's where I think that's that's what really fascinates me about the oxalate conversation. And I think it goes back to what we actually started the conversation with, which is the the sulfate transporter mechanism where so if you're the type of person who you're you're consuming a lot of oxalate it almost sounds like the body starts getting flooded with oxalate and then taking it one step further if you don't have the specific microbes in your gut that can properly metabolize oxalate which in 2020 with the amount of antibiotics that you know so much of us in the population have taken chances are we don't <laughs> and you know we we have these we start getting these health issues and we say well I got to get healthy what do I do I start drinking spinach smoothies and I eat nuts and I do all this stuff and then I start dousing my with with oxalate the oxalate those in the blood the sulfate transporter starts seeing excessive amounts of oxalate and they go well we you know we have to it almost sounds like it prioritizes it because there's so much of it available starts bringing that into the mitochondria and i'm sure for like you said genetics is more of a of a of a system of transporters and enzymes and reactions and so if you have depending on what your genetic code is those oxalates are going to go into these different places and for some people it manifests as joint pain or muscle pain for some people it's fatigue and then for a lot of people it's depression and anxiety because it, you're literally slowing down the ability of the mitochondria to properly produce ATP. And so, you know, again, this could take the form of, you know, thyroid issues. It could take the form of, of a million different reasons why you would have anxiety and depression. Is, is that about like, right? Because that, that's kind of what Absolutely. I'm getting from this conversation. Absolutely.